Markle is visiting Fiji and Tonga on her first royal tour despite health experts warning pregnant women to delay non-essential travel to areas affected by the Zika disease, but the Duchess is taking extra precautions with a surprising method. The Duchess arrived in Fiji on Monday for the second leg of her Oceania royal tour with Prince Harry. Her decision to attend the island, along with Tonga, shocked people after she announced she was pregnant. Both countries have recently seen outbreaks of the Zika virus and the Australian Department of Health has recommended women delay non-essential travel to places affected with the disease. But Meghan has been carefully selecting her wardrobe to reduce the chances of falling ill, by wearing long sleeves during her stay. Head of the Department of Disease Control at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Professor James G. Logan, said, wearing long sleeves and baggy clothes will help. Mosquitoes can even bite through jeans so if the clothing is loose it's much harder for the mosquito to bite. Wearing light-colored clothing can help as these mosquitoes are often attracted to dark clothing. It also helps you spot them, if you see a dark mosquito on a light piece of clothing. The Zika virus is a mosquito-transmitted infection and during pregnancy the virus can cause birth defects known as microcephaly. These include small heads and brain damage, blindness, deafness, seizures and other congenital defects. Meghan has swapped her fitted wardrobe for a looser tailored white dress and a blue cape gown on Tuesday. Professor Logan added that Meghan will likely be wearing mosquito repellent too. Kensington Palace confirmed last week the Duchess had sought medical advice upon learning of her pregnancy and decided to go ahead with the planned trip. But Meghan will skip the Fiji War Memorial or Kolo I Suva Forest Park because of the higher risk of mosquitoes? The World Health Organization, WHO, classifies Tonga as a Category 1 risk country. But Fiji is a Category 2 country for the virus. The WHO defines the categories as, Category 1, area with new introduction of Zika virus since 2015 or area where the virus has been reintroduced, with ongoing transmission. Category 2, area either with evidence of Zika virus circulation before 2015 or with ongoing transmission but the area does not satisfy the criteria for Category 1 or 3. Areas in Category 2nd of may also experience an outbreak of Zika. Punters are convinced Meghan Markle is pregnant with twins after bookmaker Coral took a sudden rush of bets on her giving birth to two babies. Coral has cut the odds on Meghan Markle having twins when she gives birth next spring from 8-1 to 2-4-1 after taking a flurry of bets over the last 24 hours. The Duchess of Sussex is also 51 to have triplets, while a boy is the favorite at 10-11 in the gender betting. Coral's John Hill said, Many punters feel as though Meghan and Harry will have their hands full with not one but two babies next year. We have seen a rush of bets since their announcement for the couple to have twins. Coral is also taking bets on the name of Meghan and Prince Harry's first child, with James a huge early favorite at 7-1. Other notable names receiving bets are Victoria at 8-1, Thomas at 12-1, Diana and Elizabeth both at 16-1, and Philip at 21. Outside bets include Donald and Kanye, after Donald Trump and Kanye West at 151, while Theresa, after Prime Minister Theresa May, is a huge long shot at 201. Mr. Hill added, over 60% of all the bets we have taken so far have been for James who is the early favorite. But if it is a girl, Victoria, Olivia and Diana are the names which are being heavily backed. On Monday, Bookmakers predicted punters could pile in more than pound six million in wagers as speculation over the name of Meghan and Harry's baby reaches fever pitch. Betting intelligence website www.bookmakers.tv said the rush to place bets will outstrip that witnessed with all three of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's children. Such is the popularity of Harry and Meghan royal fans will rush to speculate on the name arrival date and much more in volumes massively eclipsing the estimated £3 million registered for the entirety of the Cambridge family. Spokesman Alex Coston said, 
Meghan and Harry's popularity is off the charts and their good news will send the public into a royal betting frenzy of epic proportions. Fans are so keen to speculate on every aspect of the baby and millions will be writing on the name, arrival date and sex among many other predictions. He added, bookies will be desperate the pair go for an outside choice of name as if they follow tradition, royal watchers will cash in like never before. Bedford spokeswoman Katie Bayless said, at this stage Diana, Arthur, and Alice, which was favorite at different stages for Kate and William's babies, are the 12-1 front runners. However, with months until the baby is born, those odds will shorten, change and other names will come to the forefront, so watch this space. Jessica Bridge of Ladbrokes added, with Meghan's USA roots it would be remiss of bookmakers to rule out an American moniker featuring somewhere. Meghan is currently on her first global royal tour with Harry, and has been showing off her pregnancy glow during their first visits in Australia. Their 16-day trip will see them watch the Invictus Games, and then fly to Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand, before returning to Australia for their final stop. Meghan Markle is expecting her first child with Prince Harry next spring. But how exactly will she will spending her maternity leave and spare time? Kensington Palace confirmed Meghan and Harry will welcome their first baby next year who will be seventh in line to the throne. The palace said, their royal highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in the spring of 2019. Their royal highnesses have appreciated all the support they have received from people around the world since their wedding in May and are delighted to be able to share this happy news with the public. Meghan is expecting to give birth in the spring of 2019 and she has reportedly had her 12-week scan, and many royal correspondents are speculating that she will give birth in April or May next year. The gender of the baby has not been confirmed and Meghan and Harry are likely to follow in William and Kate's footsteps by not revealing the gender until after the child is born. The couple are on their first official foreign tour together in Australia, which is where they broke the news of the pregnancy. When asked by a group of schoolchildren what they would name their firstborn on board a tram in Melbourne during their trip, the Duchess said, We've been given a long list of names from everyone, we're going to sit down and have a look at them. Ella Burns a 12-year-old pupil from Albert Park Primary School said, she said that she hasn't thought of one as it was still quite early. Meghan will be taking time off after the birth of her first child, just as Kate has done when she gave birth to Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. The Duchess of Cambridge returned to work on October 2 after a six-month break from official engagements. Royal biographer Duncan Larkham told Bazaar.com. It is traditional for new royal mums to take a six-month break from official engagements. Meghan revealed to be like most of us when she revealed what she likes to do in her spare time. The Duchess told 12-year-old Ella she didn't have much spare time but when she does she enjoys relaxing and watching TV shows. But she did not disclose which was her favorite, there's heaps, I can't think of a specific one. The Duchess of Cambridge did not spend much time relaxing during her maternity leave this time as she spent a lot of time doting on her two other children, Prince George, 5 and Princess Charlotte, 3. Kate carried on with her motherly duties, picking up and dropping George at Thomas's Battersea. And dropping off her daughter Charlotte to Wilcox Nursery School, which is one mile away from home. The Duchess tries to keep a low profile during her maternity leave but some images from her pregnancy of Princess Charlotte showed her dropping George to Buckingham Palace for his swimming lessons. Despite Kate being on maternity leave earlier this year she was spotted in public on numerous occasions. Namely at the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, Prince Louis christening and trooping the color. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are already disagreeing on their new royal baby's future, Radar Online reports. According to the U.S. publication, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are bickering over who will take care of their royal taunt. Harry wants to honor tradition and have a royal nanny opens a new window. Like he had when he was a child, a source tells the site. 
His mother, Princess Diana, was very hands-on, but Harry and his brother were in reality raised by the royal nanny and he wants this for his child too. But, according to Radar Meghan isn't having it. Yes, she will have professional help, but she wants her mother to help raise the baby, not someone that the family appoints, the source further claimed. The Duchess of Sussex wants to have her mother, Doria Ragland, move from California to London and help with the upbringing. She's going to find a flat, the source said. She's not moving into the palace, but they will find a place for mommy, and mommy's going to help out. Doria sent fans wild last month after she was spotted taking baby care classes. The 62-year-old former social worker and yoga instructor is reportedly taking classes as the cradle company in Pasadena, Los Angeles, the Daily Star reported. The Duchess of Sussex's mother has been learning vital skills, such as first aid from specialist coaches in L.A. Meghan wants to avoid hiring staff if possible once her first child arrives. The thought of having her mum move in with them and take on the role of baby nurse is the best possible solution to that. Even more so because it's something Doria has always wanted to do anyway. A source added to the paper, she's learned everything from breastfeeding and lactation consultancy, basic baby care, CPR and first aid. The course also covers sleep training for later on, weaning and helping the new mother with her recovery. Oh, my God.